Okay, I'm just going to make a start. Welcome to MVO3. I'm Matthew Bocci, and my co-chair is uh, Sam Aldrin, and we also have our secretary, Zhu Li, who's also in the meeting. So here is the notes well. I will just leave that on the screen for a minute or two. So as with any IETF meeting or, or working group or, or anything, um, you are covered by the, the IETF note well in this meeting. Okay, blue sheets, it's a bit redundant, let's see for tradition's sake. Um, blue sheets, I think, are taken by the from the participant list in Meet Echo. Um, so the agenda, we've got 50 minutes. Um, so we've got this working group status update. Uh, and then um, we've got Greg with uh, talking about Geneve OEM, uh, and then the Geneve BF, BF, BFD for Geneve draft uh, from Germain. And then finally, she is going to do talk about the uh, loops. I'll give us an update on loops. Any comments on the agenda? So, um, as is traditional in this working group, our milestones are completely out of date um, again. So we will up update those. Uh, I don't think that we're proposing to recharge or close the working group this month or next month. Um, we will propose a new update to the list. Document status. So we have a number of IT, a number of RFCs, but no new RFCs since the uh, Singapore ITF, which is the last time I think that we had uh, an NVO3 meeting. Um, data plane encapsulation. So Geneve, which is our standards track encapsulation, is with the RFC editor now. Thank you for that. That's good. Um, we also have this draft IETF MVO3 NCAP draft that is the description of the work of the uh, data plane encapsulation design team. I started a working group last call on this um, in February, but I haven't seen any responses on the list. So I would appreciate if I'm going to keep that open. I know this is rather lengthy and send a, a reminder to the list, but we had originally said that we would like to publish, ideally like to publish this, this document as, uh, because it's a useful description of how to pick an encapsulation. Um, uh, and, and that challenge uh, comes up and that decision comes up many times in, in the work of the IETF. So we thought it was useful to publish this document. Please read the draft um, and uh, post comments to the list so that we can make some progress on this. Um, we also had some informational encapsulation drafts. Um, the VXLAN GPE draft, we think, is is probably re ready for, for working group last call. Um, I will start a well, we will start a last call, I think, for that um, after after this ITF. It's about time we, we move forward with this now, especially since Geneve um, is in is in the RFC editor's queue. Regarding the control plane. Um, so we have an EVAPN applicability to Geneve uh, draft. We requested publication for that, so it's with with Martin, our area director. Um, that's currently being held because there is a kind of a companion draft, I suppose, in in um, in the best working group, which uh, describes. Um, uh, Protocol extensions for EVPN uh, to support uh, Geneva encapsulation. Um, that's currently in working group last call. So what we decide, what we uh, think is the right thing to do is to actually send that together, send that, wait um, for that to complete, uh, send it to Martin, and then he will progress both the the best draft and our EVPN applicability draft together. Okay, virtual machine mobility. So this has finally, after numerous revisions, gone to uh, been publication requested. So that's with with Martin. 
Um, we have some we have some Yang models. Um, there's the basic the base Yang configuration document. Um, I would ask us if this if this is ready for working group last call. Um, I don't. This is this is kind of a, a high level high level model. It doesn't go into all the details of how to, for example, configure the the options of the encapsulations. Um, we we'll probably need a Yang doctor review of, uh, as well for that. And NVO3 OEM. Uh, so these are on the agenda. Um, they have been around for some time now. Um, we do need an OEM solution. I would suggest that we really have another another go after after the presentations today at seeing if we can adopt these drafts. Okay, any comments on the working group status? Okay, uh, so moving on, I think we have Greg first on the agenda. Okay, Greg, you're on. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Um, so this is update on uh, active OEM in Geneva draft. Uh, next slide, please. So um, active OEM uh, it uses a specifically constructed um, packets to detect and troubleshoot localized defects uh, and uh, measure performance in uh, Geneva network. Uh, we have uh, from IPPM Working Group RFC 7799 that uh, give classification or some strict definitions of uh, three types of OEM, uh, active OEM, passive OEM, and in between. So uh, we refer to this hybrid OEM and that uh, a class divided into subclasses. So uh, just to make a uh, to repeat their classification, the passive OEM is OEM that does not affect uh, data packet in any way. So usually that would be uh, SNMP uh, gets uh, or uh, information uh, from uh, pop sub or uh, Yang notifications. The hybrid OEM, uh, usually we uh, refer to um, methods that are on path uh, telemetry collection and uh, use uh, some information that embedded in a uh, data packet themselves. Um, so the requirement for data uh, active OEM uh, is that it must not be leaked out of Geneva domain and um, we have uh, several protocols that are being uh, developed and used uh, to do uh, the job of active OEM. So uh, some of them, it's proactive uh, defect detection, uh, some of them performance uh, measurement, and some of them are on-demand OEM uh, to do the um, defect localization and troubleshooting. So uh, we need a way for active OEM protocols to be clearly identifiable in Geneve. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, for uh, active OEM, uh, we propose uh, two types of encapsulation now in documents. So if you can recall, uh, we had uh, more types. Uh, we uh, moved them into uh, appendix, uh, archived it. And now we are uh, suggesting um, to have IP UDP encapsulation and use a uh, Geneva Association channel. So let's go to details of two uh, types that we're proposing. Next slide, please. Uh, control channel in Geneva network. So the control associated channel uh, is uh, absolutely not a new paradigm. It's uh, been uh, used and developed uh, some of you can recall from the pseudo-wire, uh, VCCV. Uh, also uh, in uh, MPLS, uh, we use it uh, for the, uh, with the GAL. And uh, it allows us uh, to um, 
limit the scope of test packets uh, to this particular um, domain so that packets would not be leaked, would not be sent uh, to a tenant. Uh, one of the methods is that uh, to define the management uh, DNI uh, in a um, domain and use um, Geneve encapsulation and um, as a default use the uh, VNI uh, value of one to identify the management VNI. And that VNI, uh, one of the uh, characteristics is that it does not have uh, tenants associated with it. So that uh, addresses one of the requirements that uh, test packets uh, sent between uh, Geneve nodes are not uh, leaked to tenants outside the Geneve domain. Any questions? Okay, uh, next slide, please. So this is how um, um, IPDP of active OEM in Geneve network uh, might look like. So under the um, Geneve uh, encapsulation, uh, use appropriate um, IP uh, address family type, and then you have uh, inner IP UDP uh, packet. Uh, the destination IP address uh, will be of uh, IPv4 uh, loopback or IPv4 mapped to IPv6 uh, loopback. Destination uh, port number uh, would be used uh, for uh, the multiplexing uh, UDP-based active OEM protocols. So most of them are UDP-based uh, with exception of uh, ICMP. So that's, uh, again, would be identifiable, easily identifiable in this case. Um, so Everything uh, works, um, or at least appears to work, uh, out of box. Uh, the concern is here is that additional IP UDP overhead, uh, which uh, creates a distance between um, Geneve header and uh, packet uh, payload, so with the um, active OEM, whether it's uh, for example, BFD or performance measurement using, for example, a uh, simple two-way active measurement protocol. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, Geneva associated head, uh, channel. Uh, so uh, using either types, we can use uh, the protocol defined for either OEM or request a definition uh, or assignment of a new either type for uh, Geneve OEM. So that's something that uh, we uh, need to consider uh, because if it's either type, it might be uh, misinterpreted as uh, CFM Y1731 OEM type. So probably it's uh, better to uh, get a new either type for um, Geneve OEM uh, using this associated channel encapsulation. Uh, again, um, the multiplexing uh, will be using um, message type and the message type can be uh, directly mapped uh, to already existing um, uh, pseudo-wire VCCV OEM and uh, it gives us uh, all uh, required uh, OEM uh, types because they've already been uh, mapped on um, pseudo-wire and MPLS. And that uh, removes the uh, need for you to use uh, additional IP UDP encapsulation for the OEM packet. So no uh, obvious um, negative. 
And next slide, please. Okay, um, so um, we really appreciate your questions, uh, comments, and as Matthew said, uh, we believe that uh, this work uh, is ready uh, for working group adoption. Um, work on echo request, echo reply um, is dependent on a decision of what we decide for the encapsulation. It's something that uh, we're planning to investigate and uh, it does not necessarily uh, will uh, create a, a new uh, mechanism. So it's more likely it will be a reference to existing mechanism uh, because we already have uh, an ITF in our uh, OEM tool set, uh, plenty of mechanisms and instruments uh, to be used. Thank you. So Greg, uh, I have a couple of questions. Uh, this is Sam uh, speaking as an individual contributor. Um, uh, the first question I have is uh, with respect to the the common channel or uh, the control channel you're proposing. What exactly you're trying to verify using that? Because you're you uh, I believe uh, you mentioned saying that you're going to use uh, uh, management VNI. Yes. Um, so it's uh, basically if um, uh, that can be used uh, in the same way as uh, with uh, IP UDP encapsulation. So it's between uh, Geneva nodes, um, right? Not, but, uh, between, so not between tenants, and it uh, any uh, OEM function uh, proactive. Um, defect detection of their uh, Geneve tunnel, uh, performance measurement uh, in Geneve tunnel uh, or along Geneve tunnel. Um, so because it shares the same encapsulation as uh, data packets uh, that being um, tunneled uh, through Geneve, uh, so it uh, shares fate with them. So it ensures that um, uh, it's useful are, information. No, you're assuming that uh, it shares the same fate. I, I totally disagree with that because um, you could have totally different load balancer uh, setup, which could take, depending on which customer you're talking to, which, what kind of traffic it is taking, right? Um, so the, the, the question, the premise of my question is um, mm -hmm. uh, you are, Trying to correlate based on uh, general what are the channel with the customer VNI, which is not true. Mm. Okay. Um, well, uh, in that case, that uh, very interesting information, and thank you, uh, Sam. Um, so, yes, um, uh, I should have stressed probably. Um, or should be stressing more than um, that fate sharing is a critical uh, requirement uh, for active OEM. So if VNI information is used uh, for load balancing, then um, effectively uh, we are talking about uh, service OEM because then it uh, has to be uh, tenant to tenant. Not or necessarily, least, right? It, because it, uh, we are uh, you are using the OEM bit or whatever to trap the packet, so it's not necessary that it always has to go to the tenant. My point is that uh, you are trying to validate um, your assumption. You're making an assumption here that uh, the traffic for uh, management VNI will always take the same fate as uh, customer traffic, which is not true. So that's my point. I mean, you, you might have a use case to measure, but I I don't see what exactly you're trying to measure in that case. In the case of IP UDP, for example, right? Mm -hmm. uh, it is you are emulating like customer traffic and you're going to apply the same policies with the options you have for the customer. Because in, in this case with the control or uh, the Genev uh, channel, I don't know which kind of options you're going to use because you're constructing totally abstract packet um, kind of thing. But 
Okay, so basically you're saying that, um, but then uh, still uh, we have the uh, problem of um, number of sessions because uh, their suggestion to use um, management VNI is uh, that, uh, well, first uh, for their um, defect detection, it gives us a continuity check. So it gives us uh, assurance that uh, there is a way uh, for the network to get uh, from one Geneva node to another node. Uh, in regard to the performance measurement, yes, I agree. Uh, there is a challenge because, um, but wouldn't be that um, outer IP encapsulation uh, used uh, for to create an entropy uh, usually, or it's a payload uh, that's used uh, to create entropy. I'm sorry, I would, I mean, I'm sorry, taking time, uh, but uh, we can take it offline. But my point is that any policies you're going to apply based on the, the customer traffic and the kind of encapsulation you use and those kind of things, right? So here you're proposing a general packet and you're trying to validate the customer path. So that's where I'm not able to see one to one there, but we can take it offline and let others speak on, who are on the line. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So, Hello. Hey, uh, this is Santosh from VMware. So um, you know, I just wanted to answer uh, Sam's question. Um, Sam, uh, uh, for load balancing, it is the outer IP and UDP that is going to get used, right? I think Sam's uh, point yeah. is that sometimes the VNI will get used as well. And maybe the path forward here is not to restrict the VNI to be the management VNI, depending on what you're trying to uh, uh, what what you're trying to assess. Right. I mean managed VNI makes a whole lot of sense if I can if I if I can find two nodes that don't seem to be talking to each other and I want to find out whether, whether they are talking to each other. I think, as Sam points out, if there's something weird going on with a customer's traffic, you might want to use the same VNI to uh, uh, to, uh, to figure out where it went off the rails. Okay, agreed. Uh, so only in those cases, I agree. Uh, but then uh, that is something like you are really verifying a tenant to tenant, right? I mean, um, it's for a tenant that you're verifying uh, and that's when the VNI comes into picture. But if you are verifying a node, uh, then probably you really don't need uh, uh, to get up until the Geneva uh, header itself. The outer IP and the outer UDP is the one which is actually getting used to load balance, uh, you know, if you have an ECMP links. I think somewhere in this discussion, uh, we're in semi-violent agreement and we need to write careful text on which VNI to use for what purpose. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Dave. Okay. Um, I think we can let's move on. Okay. Next up is uh, EFD for Geneva. You're on. Hello, Sharmin. We can't hear you. Hello? Hello, now we can hear you. Okay, good. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, it's Xiaoming here. This presentation is our uh, uh, BFD for Geneve. I've presented uh, the one version of this draft, uh, the ITF 106. Uh, this time I present the 03 version. Next slide, please. Since last time I presented this draft, uh, a new co author joins. Uh, welcome, Jeff Tazura, to be the author of this draft. Next slide, please.
This is the summary of the main updates since the uh, run version. First, the main update is to remove BFD over MPS over GNU encapsulation. We received comments that uh, this kind of encapsulation would very likely not to be used within data center. We think it's reasonable and uh, we accept this comment. The second main update is to resolve one open issue on the mapping between VAP and the VNI. Uh, after consulting uh, David Black, who is the primary author of uh, MVO3 architecture RFC 8014, we came to the conclusion that RFC 8014 allows for end to one mapping between VAP and VNI at one MVE. The current text reflects the conclusion. Next slide, please. This is a summary of this draft. Five key points of this draft are listed here. Key point one, the new BFD session originates and terminates at the web of MVE. Key point two, web and VNI have the relationship of N to one within one MVE. Key point three, originating web decides GNU BFD encapsulation and the VNI. Key point four, peer web address can be obtained by management or control plane. Key point five, management VNI and BFD echo function are out of scope. Next slide, please. This slide uh, provides more details on key point one. Uh, Geneva BFD session originates and terminates and the uh, web of an MVE. With that, uh, web MAC or IP address would be used as the inner MAC or IP address. When Ethernet over Geneva encapsulation is applied, there is a possibility that uh, no IP address is assigned to a uh, web. If the terminating web has no IP address assigned, then set the IP destination address as a special IP address. If the originating web has no IP address assigned, currently the IP address of the originating MVE is used. But uh, after discussion among uh, co-authors, it seems uh, all zero IP address is more reasonable. So we will make this change in the next revision. Next slide, please. Uh, this slide uh, provides more details on key point two. Web and VNI have the end-to-one -end mapping relationship within one MVE. Due to the fact that uh, end to one mapping between uh, web and the VNI at one MVE is allowed by ML3 architecture, multiple BFD sessions for one VNI are allowed between a pair of MVEs. If the BFD packet is received with your discriminator equals to zero, VNI itself is not enough to demultiplex the received BFD packets. A MAC IP address and the source UDP port are also needed. If the BFD packet is received with non-zero your discriminator, then the BFD session would be, would be demultiplexed only by your discriminator. Next slide, please. This slide uh, provides more details on key point three. Originating web decides the used Geneva BFD encapsulation and VNI. This job defines two kinds of Geneva BFD encapsulation. One is BFD over uh, Ethernet over Geneva. Another one is BFD over IP over Geneva. The former is used when a uh, web that uh, originates the BFD packets is used to encapsulate Ethernet data frames. The latter is used when a web that originates the BFD packets is used to 
encapsulate IP data packets. A BFD session can only be established between two webs that are mapped to the same VNI and use the same way to encapsulate data packets. This design makes the Geneva OAM packet fit sharing with Geneva data packets. That's a key uh, characteristic of OAM mechanism. Next slide, please. Key point four is that peer web address can be obtained by management or control plane. The encapsulation type and address of peer web can be obtained by uh, NetConf, EVPN, uh, OVSDB, or OpenFlow, etc. Next slide, please. Key point five is that uh, management VNI and the BFD echo function are out of scope. Uh, management VNI method uses a special independent VNI to perform OAM related functions, including uh, Geneva BFD. But management VNI can only check whether the Geneva tunnel works for the special VNI. So it's complementary to the method described in this draft. Besides, currently BFD echo function is considered out of scope. Uh, we don't know such a requirement now. And uh, the same uh, goes to BFD demand mode. Next slide, please. Uh, next step, well, we think this draft uh, is a good starting point for Geneva BFD. So we ask for working group adoption of this draft. Thank you. Thank you. Any comments? Okay, so I, I presume the intent is to point to the other draft for encapsulation draft for all the encapsulations that you need. Sorry? I assume the intent is to point is to make sure that the two drafts are, are aligned and you're pointing to the, the OEM encapsulation draft. Oh, yeah, yes. Uh, in this draft, uh, actually, uh, I have made my own uh, selection. Uh, I selected the uh, IPUDP encapsulation because I think uh, this kind of encapsulation is Feed sharing with the real data packets. It can check the encapsulation and the decapsulation of Geneva. If you have a data packet uh, like uh, Ethernet frames, uh, you need to check whether the Ethernet frames can be encapsulated and decapsulated correctly. So I think uh, this kind of encapsulation is suitable for uh, Geneva OAM. Okay. Thank you. Any any comments? Okay, David, you're on. Agree with um, uh, Matthew. I agree, agree with your general sense that we ought to do the ought to use one encapsulation uh, for uh, for uh, both drafts, at least for the non-management uh, uh, VNI case. And yes, we ought, we, we, ought, we ought to get them aligned. Okay, thank you. Okay, any other comments? If not, then uh, thank you. Move on to issue. Yeah, this is Yijo speaking. Hi. Okay, I'm going to talk about the uh, uh, loop updates. The loops stands for local optimization um, pass segments. We talked about this in ITF 106 meeting. So uh, today I'm going to give some updates on it. 
Uh, next slide, please. Yeah, to quickly recap what uh, Loop's trying to do, um, Loop aims to provide uh, local in-network loss recovery over specific segment. So here, when we say the local in-network loss recovery, basically it means to recover the packet loss between uh, an overlay tunnel. So, um, so there are basically there are three elements that the loops try to provide. The first one is to the first one is the information model for local recovery. Uh, basically, there are two modes of packet recovery. One is the retransmission. The other is the FEC. So. Um, both of them can be encapsulated in a variety of formats and uh, loops trying to define some of those. Uh, for example, GNIF for sure is one of the candidate protocol. Then there are possibly uh, other protocol encapsulations like GIE. Then the second element of loops is the local, uh, local measurement. The local measurement is basically used to set the recovery parameters. For example, for the timeout or the uh, forward error correction rate. The third one is the congestion feedback uh, because certainly the in-network loss recovery won't impact, won't have negative impact to the end-to-end -end congestion control loop. So the basic idea here is uh, the loops egress try to uh, easier mark the recovered packet so that the end host sender can use the CE marking uh, to trigger the appropriate congestion control. So uh, the idea is to use the ECN to inform the end host about congestion control. These are three basic elements of, uh, of loops. Next slide, please. Uh, this gives a, 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 a simple uh, picture on what we are trying to do. The loops ingress and the egress basically are, are overlay nodes. Then the data is sending from, from uh, ingress to egress. Here the data normally are the aggregated flows. So then the acknowledgement is sent back from egress to ingress. Uh, there are different ways to send back the ag. Uh, it could be in some aggregated format. And if the retransmission is used, then the ingress should determine when the packet is lost and perform the retransmission. And uh, if fact, if forward error correction is used, then there, uh, there must be some uh, fact encapsulations uh, inside. Uh, the, it could be, a, it is applicable to various scenarios. We talk about this, so I'm not going to uh, t talk too much details on this. For example, uh, there are multiple uh, there are multiple segment based uh, overlay paths or, or tunnels over the clouds, or there are SD WAN based branch office interconnection. Mm, there it could be a three segment based interconnection from the enterprise CPE to a POP and uh, uh, between two pops and from pop to another enterprise CPE. Um, of course, there are also some uh, wireless scenarios. There are, there are certain wireless subpaths, for example, like the in satellite use case, then the loops can be used uh, upon the wireless subpaths to achieve better uh, reliability. Uh, next slide, please. So uh, how it relates to Geneve, uh, we, we had a non-working group forming both in IETF 105. Uh, it was to explore the design space. So for this meeting, uh, we are going to have a working group forming both uh, on Friday. So the scope is narrowed down to the MVP, minimum viable protocol. And, uh, we have uh, how to use the ECN. 
uh, basically we want to convert the package drop to a C marking and uh, we want to define a, a effect default uh, for the loops and uh, it relates to Geneva in the sense that uh, we we, we're trying to focus on the Geneva encapsulation first and leave all the other potential uh, protocol encapsula encapsulations for future. So uh, the Geneva, uh, so so the loops is going the solution the solution sketch is going to give a, a whole picture of the loops function. For example. Uh, what are the sequence number space, how to determine the initial sequence number, how to generate an egg or a neck, how to detect the loss. Uh, these are available in the draft here in the gener generic information draft. Then later, a Geneva binding draft defines the format, how to embed those loops information inside the Geneva, map all these functions uh, to Geneva. Uh, it's uh, it gives the specific data plane format. Of course, it should take care of the Geneva specifics. For example, the Geneva has the um, control 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 channel to carry certain information, so the loops can make use of it. And also the option format, uh, how to we, the, the loops need to follow the Geneva's uh, guideline for defining the options. Next slide. So here is the above information. It's on Friday, uh, 11 a.m. Uh, uh, so we are thinking uh, because the Geneva is the is the current focus of the loops encapsulation. Uh, so if you are interested in in this, so you might want to join us. Um, it it is it, is it, is this buff is for uh, is is belonging to transport area. Of course, it talks about quite a lot of transport features, but encapsulation is is also a very important part there uh, for loops. So we welcome you to to join this buff. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Any comments, questions? Hi, Izo. Uh, I have one quick question. So do you require specific uh, code points like uh, from Geni protocol for, to make this happen? Uh, not yet. Um, because we want to make sure uh, the transport area are comfortable with what we are proposing. It does not break the internet transport first. Then if that part uh, is is okay, then um, later talking about the, uh, the, de the details of the encapsulation, we probably want to apply for the code point. But, but basically, I think it's a, for the options it could be in the form of the Geneva options. I see. So uh, the reason why I'm asking is, um, which uh, my subsequent question is, um, does any of the intermediate uh, hosts, not the end hosts, uh, should be taking a look at uh, any of these options and behave differently? Because uh, one of the things we were deliberating uh, for last few years is that um, um, the the options do not play much uh, within the uh, the network right so in other words uh, it is pretty much end to end negotiation and you won't be using much uh, within the uh, path so I was just wondering, like, what exactly the implication because of that? Uh, so okay, can you go back to the, I think, this, the second slide? Yeah, so we are, we are expecting that the ingress and the egress node here actually are ME, it's not the end host. So it can be some, uh, uh, NFV format of the virtual nodes. And uh, we are seeing that some of the, the 
mm, we, are, we are seeing that uh, some of the uh, Geneva option are in use, but it, um, but it is more likely in the uh, controlled environment, for example, in data center. So here in, 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 in our specific use case, all the virtual nodes here actually can be configured by a controller. So, so in that way, uh, we will try to make sure the virtual nodes or overlay nodes here can um, can support the same uh, same functionality of this option. So that that's 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 the um, that's the plan basically. Thanks. Any other comments or questions when you're? If not, then I think we're done. Uh, thanks very much. We're more or less on time. And uh, see you or hear you next time. Thank you. Oh, and uh, please do um, review any of the drafts that we've discussed today and post comments to the list, especially those OEM drafts that we would like to uh, continue discussion on and uh, move forward with some OEM solutions. Thanks.